Counsel, I, I hear everything you say, okay? So take it as read, okay? But normally, I mean, my bankruptcy experience is limited. So I'm, and yours is much, much more, uh, you, you have access uh, to people with great more expertise. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really pleading for that, okay? Normally, I think of good faith purchasers, put aside bad faith purchasers, okay? As once they purchase an asset in bankruptcy, we're done. And it's all about finality and resolution and moving on and quickly resolving these cases. And that's really pretty essential to the greater purposes of the bankruptcy laws, certainty and allowing people an opportunity for a new start, okay? What happens to good faith purchasers in these circumstances who through no fault of their own, but because of the monkey business of the parties have major assets, you know, potentially would withdrawn from them years later. I mean, we're, gonna, we're talking years later. That just seems to me contrary to what I know instinctively about the bankruptcy laws. Now, perhaps there's some other limitation that we can make up, or we can find. Yes, yes, you're, you're, you're shaking your head to the right question and nodding it to the right question. Help me, what, what is it? Sure, so if the purchaser, the good faith purchaser was not a party to the appeal, which, which we think is not the situation we have here. I gotcha. If instead they, they're sort of, it's three years later, yes. and suddenly someone is showing up at their door and saying, well, you need to give us the property. Then we think they could assert section 363M. They wouldn't have had an opportunity to mm -hmm. assert it before, so they would not have waived. They would not have forfeited. There would be no concerns with respect to judicial estoppel. That's helpful. Thank you.